Hello everyone, welcome back to Glitz and Glitter. I am finally getting around to these molds that was gifted to me a while a while ago, a couple weeks ago, probably three weeks ago. Anyway, I have four Tree of Life coasters. I'm not doing all four because these are going to be time consuming. I'm going to do the two easiest ones today. Yay! So I chose these two. Now the difference between these two and the Sea Life ones, actually these four and the Sea Life ones that I did a while back, these are raised up, which means I have to fill in the outside first. The Sea Life ones, this part was down where I could fill in all the little areas with the UV resin first. So these are kind of going to be backwards. So I got this new set in today. Look at these. Of course, two are missing. These two right here. This is a set of 60 mica powders. I have never used Let's Resin mica powders before, shockingly. I chose two blue ones for today. So they didn't come this way. I flipped them all over and I put them in color order. So I think they're gorgeous and I'm going to get through all of these one of these days. So I'm going to be using these for a while and uh, pushing my other ones aside for a little bit. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to mix up just like a half ounce, half fluid ounce of my Fast Cure 4-Hour because it's thick and I think it'll stay easier. I'll only mix one up at a time. And I picked blue to be kind of the sky color. And I don't know which color I'm going to pick for the tree yet. I've got my little scribe here. This is about the size of a toothpick. I just like it more because I can hold it better. And I'm basically going to drip in all these tiny holes. If you guys have done these, let me know of another way because this is going to take a long time. This one, not so much. I was thinking about putting mica powder on this, but maybe I'll still try it. I don't know how to clean it all. And you know me in cleaning. I got to get every morsel out that doesn't belong there. Now I could dip it in alcohol. I might try that. But I'm going to think about that while I work on this one. So I'm going to mix up some resin and pick one of these colors and we're going to get started with this. I've got half a fluid ounce mixed up of my Fast Cure. I almost accidentally did my casting resin. I had to stop myself. So I'm going to go with this blue. It looks really pretty and vibrant. So we're going to start with this one. And I'm going to think about that other one while I'm doing this one. So I'll show you the first bit and how slow it's going to go. And then I will clearly fast forward you because that will not be fun to watch. Look at that gorgeousness. So what colors do you think I should do the tree? That would be an interesting question to ask you all. Because I don't know what color to do. I want to pick some of these colors out of this box. I don't know if I should do gold or brown for the tree. I don't know. So I'm going to think about that. Okay, so what I'm going to do, kind of the same way. I just moved the other one out of the way. Same way I did the UV resin, only this is not going to cure as fast. I'm just going to... Well, this one's not so bad because you have all this space you could pour into. But I think I'm going to try these little areas first just to see how it's going to go. And I'm just really very slowly spreading it around these tree branches. As you can tell, this is going to take quite a while. So I will fast forward this for you in just one second. I mean, it's doable, but you need patience and good eyesight <laughs> because I cannot. Oh, it goes up there. Okay. See, it goes right in between. So yeah, this is going to definitely be time consuming, but if I do it good enough, it might turn out really pretty. 
All right, you guys ready for some fast forwarding? So if I had to guess, that probably took me 20 minutes, and then I let it sit for a couple of minutes to see if it was going to separate from itself, which it did in a couple tiny, tiny little spots in these teeny, tiny little areas. So I just dripped another drip in, and now we're just going to let it cure, which shouldn't take long. Now I'm afraid if I put my heat mat on this, it's going to shrink it more, and then it won't be full. So I don't know what I'm going to do. But I am going to try, I'm going to try to get a tiny little paintbrush after I get this stuff out with alcohol and mica powder. And I'm going to see if I could do it. If I can't, I'm just going to clean it off and do the exact same thing I just did with this one. So let me figure out what mica powder I want for this. And we're going to give that a shot. I've taken out my gold intense chameleon powder it's called gold this is the let's resin one i'm gonna try the micro brush and i'm hoping see yeah i'm gonna have a lot of cleanup in there um maybe i should use the alcohol trick because I really I really don't want to clean all that up all right let me find a brush so I tried a little bit before I move forward what I did was I dipped the brush in the alcohol and then in this powder kind of wiped it off of course I'm doing the biggest part first I mean it's painting on I don't know how I'm going to do the little parts other than very slowly so I don't know which one is going to be worse the dripping it in with the resin <laughs> or trying to paint this on let me give it a go for a few minutes if I absolutely don't want to do this then I will wipe it off and start over. You guys are not going to believe what I just did. Watch this. Yep, I washed it out. I did not like it. So after 20 minutes of painting it with the mica and the alcohol, there was a ton of cleanup to do, and the brush was just not getting it off. So I was like, nope, I am not putting all this time and effort into something that I'm not going to be happy with. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to take some alcohol just like that and take it off. Do you think that would come off? It did not. It wouldn't even budge it. So I had to douse it with acetone, a soft brush, and then some soapy water and a soft brush and soapy water and a soft brush. And I could still kind of see tints of gold, but that's okay because I'm probably going to pour the back with gold. So saying all that, I don't recommend that way. I don't like it. Well, I don't like it. You can do whatever you want. I have mixed up my sky blue. And I'm going to do it the way I did that one. So I shall put you on another fast forward. You're going to be watching this video in a lot of fast forwards. All right. Anyway, I'm going to do it the exact same way I did that one. And then I'm going to just let them cure and be patient.
Did you see what I just did there, you guys? How many of you were yelling at the screen to do that? So take like a little squeegee and just wipe it in. Oh my gosh. I can't even believe I didn't think of that. I'm sure all of you did because that's usually how it happens. I do it all wrong and you guys help me tell me how to do it right in the comments. But this time I figured it out before I read the comments. So I'm just kind of cleaning it up. That was so much easier. Why didn't I just do that? Now I know for the other two over there the another day. The other thing I was thinking you could do, which I didn't really want this look, is just fill the whole thing with your resin, whatever color. And then when you unmold it, you could fill all these um, negative spots in with like a uh, acrylic ink, or not acrylic ink, acrylic paint. And then top coat it. You could do it that way too. But I didn't really want an acrylic paint color for my color. I wanted like the mica powder look. So... After all that trouble, I hope you learned something, because I certainly did. I tried to find a video on these before I did these to see how somebody else did it. I can't find one out there. I didn't see anybody doing these. Maybe they know something I don't know. Okay, I'm going to let these cure naturally, and then we will come back. I'm going to figure out what color to fill them and get these things done. All right, they are cured. They're ready for their final coat. What I think is their final coat. Who knows what's going to happen. <clears throat> so, I was going to use the gold mica powder from Let's Resin so I could try it. But, I didn't want like the little lines that mica powder kind of makes when it, when it cures in the trees. I wanted just gold. So, I decided to use my Gold Rush glitter. A lot of it. But... I didn't want it to sink to the bottom either. It is a super fine glitter. It shouldn't sink, but I'm using my casting resin, which is a little thinner than the four hour. Why I chose it, I don't know. Um, so I'm just going to add some Elmer's glue to my resin to thicken up the resin. And I mix up four ounces. It should hold about two ounces each. So as I always say in all my videos when I use the glue, I use one drop per ounce. So I'm gonna use four drops of the Elmer's glue before I add my glitter. One, two, three, four. That's all you need. And all the glue does, if you're new to my channel and you haven't seen me do this, Daniel Cooper came up with this technique and it makes your your resin super duper thick and gloopy like hair gel and it will suspend your glitter even your chunky glitters which is what an amazing amazing discovery he did so I give him all the credit for that one um, so what I do is I make sure it's thick and it, it seems to always work one drop per ounce and it cures just fine cures just no problem some people said if they use the white, it cloudies their resin. And some people said they use the white and it doesn't cloudy the resin. So I can't answer that question because I don't have the white Elmer's glue. I would say if you're going to go buy it for this purpose, just buy the clear. And then you don't have to worry about it. But if you already have the white Elmer's glue, I would test it out. Test it in one ounce of resin, put one drop in see what happens because it seems like the answers are all over the board on that one so I want enough glitter that I'm not going to see any clear through those tree branches and I think what I'll do on the next two another day I'm gonna keep the trees all gold so this can stay as a set and I'll just do all the backgrounds in different blues I think that's what I'm going to do. And now that I know the trick with the little squeegee, it'll go even faster. I won't be like wasting three hours of my time here. All right, so I'm just going to pour this in. Let them sit overnight until tomorrow. And we shall demold. Now when you have the glue in here, you kind of have to slice it off. Like I said, it just wants to stay in one big piece of resin. I'm just going to dome them. Mm. 
And that was the perfect amount. Two ounces. So they actually hold because, well, I'd say two and a quarter ounces because I mixed up a half ounce first, but I only used half of that. I do have pendants curing over there with the rest of it. So I will show you those tomorrow because those are not done. All right, easy peasy. Spray with some 99% alcohol. Pop any bubbles, not that it matters. Those are the back. And uh, yeah, I shall see you tomorrow. Everything is cured. It is time to demold. It's been um almost 24 hours, not quite. But between pouring it and curing it, a lot has happened in my life. So I just want to give a shout out to Paul and Lori. So Paul and Lori emailed me about a week ago and they said they were going to be in my neck of the woods at an art show. They sell their art. It's beautiful art. And they said they were going to be in Inglewood, Florida on so-and-so day at so-and-so time and that they had some uh, Virginia Beach sand for me if I wanted it, if I wanted to come pick it up. And I'm like, okay, well, I don't mind going down there and meeting people. So I went down there today and oh my goodness, sand, like I brought them a tiny little bit of our sand to give them back and some crushed shell, like nothing much at all, two little bags. I get there and I got to talk to them for quite a while and they're really sweet people and I guess they watch me all the time. This is what they gave me, two of these huge, massive bags of Virginia Beach sand. So it was so heavy, he had to carry it to my car for me. And I get it home and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to weigh this. I have no idea how much this weighs. You guys, 16 and a half pounds of Virginia Beach sand in my house right now. So you guys are going to get some beach scenes pretty soon. So thank you so much, Paul and Lori. It was really cool hanging out for a while today, talking to you. I know you're seeing this like a week later, but same thing. Then he introduced me to his friend across the way doing another booth. And his friend is named Mark and Kathy Slavin, and they do um, dichro fused dichronic, I'm sure I'm saying that wrong, art glass jewelry, and their stuff was gorgeous. And they were so sweet, and they gave me two pieces of this glass that they have fired. I don't know how they do it. I made him promise me to invite me over because he actually lives in my city and I want to learn how to do this. So he gave me two pieces to see what it will do underneath resin. So I am so excited to do that. So thank you, Mark and Kathy. That was not expected, but certainly appreciated. And I just want to show you before we unmold those, I made a few pendants with the leftover blues. I didn't put anything on the top because these are like beveled on the sides. So I didn't really want to try to coat that and put anything on them. So those are the extras. What an exciting day, you guys. All right, so it is time to unmold. Let's hope after all of that, that these come out okay. Oh my goodness, they're really stuck in that mold. Well, it's all those little pieces parts. Okay, are you ready? Oh, it came out clean. That's a good sign. Okay, here we go. Oh, that's pretty, but you know, because of that part, it's dull, so it does need a top coat, and I bet that glitter will come to life, and the blue will come to life. So the question is, do I use UV resin, or do I use regular resin? Now, this one's coming out much easier because it's not as large. Oh, that's a pretty blue. Hmm, I'm wondering, oh, that would be a lot of work if I just filled that in with the UV resin. I definitely can't do that on this one. I would have to do the whole thing. So I guess I'm gonna do the whole thing on both, but always check your edges because if there is a bubble, it's not really a bubble, but I feel something. If there's a bubble on your edge and you do a top coat, oh, right there is a teeny, teeny, tiny one. Make sure you tape that up or all your resin will flow out if you're using two-part epoxy. This one's got barely, but it does have a couple tiny ones. I don't know if you could see that. Probably not. They're so small. Either way, I think they look really good. 
for being dull at the moment. So let me figure out what kind of resin I'm going to use. And um, yeah, let's get these top coated. So because I don't have much UV resin left, I need to order some more. I'm going to use my four hour fast cure because that is the thickest resin that I have. Now I did, for some reason, something was telling me to do it because I don't usually tape my stuff. I taped it, I brought it just up over the edge. I don't think the tiny bubbles would have affected it, but I don't know, I don't want it dripping over the side. So I do put it on a paper cup, get it level, same thing for this one. And if it does drip over, especially if you're not taping the side, it won't go down all over your table and adhere it to there. So because I'm called Glitz and Glitter, I'm adding my rainbow shimmer into the top coat. It's just going to give it a tiny little shimmery effect. I was contemplating doing gold, but I didn't want it to interfere with the, uh, the gold glitter. So this has a little hint of all the pretty colors of the rainbow. Hence the name, Rainbow Shimmer. So I just put a tiny little bit in there. And I'm just going to kind of top coat them. This is about three quarters of a fluid ounce. And I will probably have extra. It doesn't take a whole lot to top coat. So I'm not even being like super worried because I did tape up the edges. <laughs> Normally, I'm very careful when I top coat. Oh, that brings out the glitter beautifully. I'm just gonna bring it to the edge and then heat gun it or torch it or add heat one way or the other. You can use a lighter, you can use alcohol, pop any bubbles. So I'm just going to kinda coat the whole thing then I have to be patient and let it cure. That's why I like UV resin because it's like instantaneous. You know, I live in this microwave world. Sometimes we just have to wait. They are finished, you guys. I pulled the tape off. Everything looks great. I am so happy with them. Can you see the sparkle in them? Not only did the gold come out, but now there's sparkle in the blue. These mica powders are gorgeous. So far, I've only used two. I think in the next video you see, I might be testing a bunch of them. So definitely come back and check it out. See how pretty that is? And then, not too long from now, I will be doing the other two. These two are sitting here right next to me. So I don't forget. So now that I know the trick with that little squeegee thing, these will be much easier. All right, I'm gonna get you some good close-up pictures. Thanks for coming in, you guys. I hope you all have a blessed day. I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.